How's it going, everyone? It's your boy Darth Shigong from Gaming on the Dark Side, GOTDS, and you know, as always, we got this coming at you with a video for Clash of Beasts. Anyways, guys, we've got ourselves a developer's note. We're moving up here into March. Well, the end of March, I should say, man. This month is done, and we're coming into April, which means spring is on its way, and they've got some pretty interesting little tidbits here. So let's just get right up into it. Let's get into these dev notes. All right, here we go. Greetings, Beastmasters. Spring is finally upon us, and the season of exploration is coming to an end. This past month, we saw the introduction of our new festivals feature, kicking off with the Festival of Love and the unbearably lovable beast, Theodormus. We wrapped up the season roster with the final two beasts, Quetzalcoatl and Tantalos, flying their way into the season collection. Over the past month, we also implemented various UI and balancing improvements in an effort to try to provide the best user experience for all our players. All right, so right off the bat, guys, I just want to say something about Theodormus. The dude is awesome. I like him. I got him. But what I couldn't do was finish him. I couldn't complete the entire thing. Um, if they're going to do this again, I would highly recommend that they allow us to continue doing quests in-game to keep getting the in-game currency to keep unlocking more levels. I think and with Theodormus, there was like only three of them or something like that. Two or three, and then we were done. There was no more you could do. Right? So you can only either buy hearts with actual gems and money or, you know, luck of the draw, try and get some from attacking things. And that would just never happen, right? You needed so many of them. So I'm really hoping they revamp that and allow people. So if you're free to play and you put the time in, I mean, hey, because time is an investment. Whether you want to think it or not, man, time is money. And some people have more time than money and they're willing to just, you know, play the game and go. They should be able to get the stuff as well. Um, as much as people that want to pay for it. Now, that's just my opinion when it comes to this kind of stuff. All right, let's keep on moving on. As the flowers begin to bloom, so too does the amazing lineup of content that we have coming up for all of you in this brand new update. So without further ado, let's take a look at what's in store for the Clash of Beasts in April. The season of expiration is due to end on the 6th of April to make way for the next season, the season of conquest. However, before the current season ends, we've still got a couple of surprises in store for you. The first of which was especially added for all of you extremely active players who already completed all the Season Beast branches. Introducing the Season Token Chest, a special new chest which will appear in the Armory, where players can spend an excess Season Tokens to gain additional valuable rewards before the season ends. Remember, your Season Tokens do not, they do not carry over into the next season, so spend them while you can. Secondly, we will be introducing a season leaderboard which grants additional and exclusive rewards to the highest performing players of the entire season. So if you fancy yourself a season champion, now you have the chance to prove it and seal your name in this season's hall of fame. All right, it's cool guys, that, you know, they're already going right into a brand new season. We have a brand new season of Conquest. That means they're gonna have new beasts and all that kind of stuff, which is cool. Um, the season token chest is great. I can see that being for the players that have been playing for a while and they did finish all the stuff. They, you know, got to put those tokens someplace, especially if they don't carry over. But what I don't see on here is they, they're not saying that the keys do not carry over. So I would love some clarification on that. If you know for a fact that the keys will or will not carry over into the next season, please comment below. That would be awesome because um, that's something I'm curious about. Because let's just say, for example, I'm so far into uh, you know my last um, legendary beast, the frog for me, but I can't quite finish it. Do those keys just disappear? Or do they carry over into the next season? Because they do, uh, it gives you some thinking. Maybe I don't want to unlock Tantalos, and maybe I want to save it up so I have a head start on the next season's beasts. I guess we'll find out. Um, as far as the season leaderboard, that seems pretty interesting. I haven't seen anything in game for that yet, um, but I'm kind of curious how that's gonna work. Is it based off of activity? Is it based off points? Is it based off the amount of battles? Is it? based off multiple things, and then different people are able to get uh, titles and rewards based off just pure great gameplay. Um, that'll be interesting to see how they do that. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, let's keep on going. The Season of Conquest will introduce five brand new season beasts, this time hailing from the barren wastelands of the lower world. So expect some ruthless aggression from these barbaric beasts. The first two beasts will be available from the start of the new season, 
and the rest will follow in the coming weeks. So make sure you participate in as many events as possible throughout the season in order to secure them and to help climb your way up the season leaderboard. Oh, so I wonder if the season leaderboard is going to be just starting with the next season and this one season right now, we're just, you know, it's not going to happen. That's interesting. Um, cool, man. Five new beasts. Now, when it says from the lower world here, and they're talking about it, it's almost like they're kind of flirting with a bit of lore. And it would be awesome if they added a little more lore into the game. I'm a, I'm a big lore freak, and I would love to have more information about the world of Varen that we're in. And, you know, just to kind of have a little bit more reason why these beasts are doing what they do, doing, who they don't like, all those kind of things. It just kind of adds that little extra layer, I feel personally, for some people, especially myself. All right, <laughs> what's next? Spring is in the air, and all across the lands of Varen, people are preparing for the upcoming Festival of Growth, a celebration of the ancient goddess of growth and agriculture, Eos. Just like the Festival of Love, players can participate in a special time-limited quest line, providing them with a unique currency to cash in for an abundance of valuable rewards, and aid them in obtaining the brand new festival beast, Lopis. Lopis? Much like Theodormus, Lapis will have his own special synergy and extraordinary spells, and we are all really excited for you all to master his unique playstyle. The Festival of Growth will begin on the 15th of April and run through the 29th of April, so be sure to log in every day to not miss out. Now, before I finish this last paragraph here, this obviously is a, a little season guy, right guys, like Theodormus was. Once again, I'm going to say, I really hope that they have a quest line that will go on for as long as we need it to, um, to get as much of the special currency, which I'm thinking is gonna be something like eggs, dude. I, I can see like little little Easter eggs or something like that coming out, something for this time of year. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what this guy can do, what he looks like. I have some ideas, but I'm wanting, I'm waiting to see. I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Let's see what we got and go from there. Um, but yeah, that, that's all I'm hoping. I'm just hoping that free to play don't, you know, ha I should say have an opportunity to get more than just unlock him. They should be able to get further in. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, there shouldn't be some currency that goes into it, but come on, guys. Let's, let's, let's make it a little bit more like, hey, time. You got to reward people for their time. All right, cool. Let's read this last paragraph. Aside from the new season and the festival of growth, April's update will also bring some additional improvements to the game. And what are they? We have added two new VIP tiers into the game, each of which has their own new and unique perk. To help some of you more eager players reach these tiers levels faster, we've also made some changes to some of the event-themed limited offers and monthly cyclic packs, allowing them to be purchased more times before reaching their limit. Any, uh, wait, let's finish that first. So this is cool. I mean, I mean, if you're going to be spending money in the game and supporting the game, which I fully support, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's no reason why if you're really enjoying the game, you can't toss a few bucks to developers saying, hey, thanks for the game and all um but like, like i said when you purchase things you get those vip points also you get vip points from completing daily quests so, i mean you can get them too by being free to play you don't have to pay money so it just takes obviously longer so i'm glad that's there um some of these packs being able to be purchased more than what they were before i don't have a problem with that if people want to spend money on the game let them and all you know um i like that you don't necessarily have to so far i've been pretty happy with the monetization of this game um, I don't think this is going to cause a problem. I mean, people that are going to spend money are going to spend money, and there's no reason why we can't have, you know, our whales of the game be, you know, keeping the game going. Because obviously the more money we get into there, the more they can develop, the more things they're going to give us. So, hey, I don't see any problem with that. Not myself personally. I mean, whales are always going to be whales, right? All right, let's move on to the next thing here. It says, any resources cost, well, let's go resource cost. I don't know why there's an S there. Any resource costs that are required for a battle, for example, energy or cinders, are now only used up at the end of the battle to prevent the loss of resources due to battle errors. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. That was so frustrating, this last Raid Wars, man. I sat there, and I got, like, all my stars or something like that, and I go in for attack, and all of a sudden there's some kind of error. I get kicked out. Something happens, and I lose all those stars. Or, um, yeah, I, I remember I did that once with a 100 uh, energy attack. I wanted to get one in, and boom, something happened. Lost all my energy. I was not happy all right so this is a great thing i do like this this is awesome because i mean hey bugs happen errors happen phones turn off things go on all kinds of crazy stuff wi-fi messes up this is cool i am really thankful for this so thank you devs for fixing this problem hopefully well hopefully it works <laughs> all right let's move on 
Since the game's launch, we had a few reports from players who found themselves in the clan with an inactive leader. How dare they? We have now added the functionality that if a clan leader has been inactive for 30 days, the rest of the clan has the option to, to demote them and a new leader will be appointed. That's nice. Um, luckily, my clan has an awesome leadership and he is on, on there all the time. So thank you so much, sir. Mr. Taren, I appreciate it. And um, so we don't have to worry about that problem. But I can understand that being frustrating for some other players, especially if their clan has done a lot of stuff, a lot of research, all those things. In addition to the new content and features introduced with this month's update, we already have the next big feature for the game currently in development. Ooh, I like the way that sounds. We will have more to share with you on this soon. But believe me when I say it will bring some serious new action for you. Hell yeah! That's awesome, dude. I'm really looking forward to some new game modes, some new challenges, something that, you know, requires me to use more of my roster, whatever, dude. I'm glad to see the game is still growing. There's more stuff happening. I mean, hey, this is brand new. For you guys that might not have played this game yet or maybe you're thinking about this game, jump in now, man. Get in early. Start building your roster up, dude. So as they keep adding more stuff, you're good to go. Aside from the new features and changes that have arrived with this update, we have also been working hard to address all the feedbacks and issues that you've reported to us. We are pleased to say that the following reported issues have now been resolved. Which issues? Let's find out. Issue where a player avatar was still displayed in battle after the user quit or disconnected. Yes, thank you for that. That's so freaking annoying because if someone left, then it's not worth me swapping a beast. Um, and losing out on my XP and all of the crud that goes along with it, my stars, whatever. So I'm glad about that. Issue where festival push notifications were sent after the festival ended. Okay, I can see that being annoying. Issue where Jaginda's revitalized spell did not heal the beast. I haven't gotten my Jaginda that high, so I haven't ran into that problem, but that would suck. Mismatch issue with victory points of personal points and clan contributions. Hmm? Oh, that's interesting. Issue when receiving a new message in the chat, disruptively re redirected the user immediately to the bottom of the chat feed. Ha <laughs> ha! Definitely, dude. That was frustrating. I'm glad they're fixing chat, man. Let's see. Issue where profile avatars were improperly displayed in several areas of the game. I never had that happen to me. Issue where the expedition portals could sometimes require a beast which does not exist. Ah <laughs> See, I just thought because I sucked and I haven't unlocked enough beasts, but come to find out, there might be some beasts that didn't exist. So maybe I don't suck that bad. All right, let's see here. Issues with the shop loading on certain devices. Ooh, I, I, know, I know that's an issue for them. They're like, oh, we need our shop to load up for everyone's device. Otherwise, we won't even buy it. Let's see here. Issue where the beast training sound plays even with the sounds switched off in the settings. That's because beast training is important. They don't care about your sound settings. Man, come on, dude. Let the beast make their sounds. But hey, I can see if you want the sound off. Maybe you're trying to sneak in some clash at work, like I do, and all that. You don't need the beast going off. I, I can understand that being an issue. Let's see here. Uh, issue where the player avatar would sometimes be displayed erroneously on the map during battles. My display of my avatar, it's never erroneous. All right? I want to see it more. But hey, maybe for some people I can see that being mistakes. Let's see here. Issue with error message appearing when attempting to kick a player from a clan. Pfft, the only error is that player making the mistake of being in my clan and causing issues that caused me to kick you. There's no error. Um, no, I can see that being an issue though. If we're trying to get rid of someone that might not be an act, you know, be active enough or something like that, whatever. Hey, you gotta get rid of those guys. I can understand. Issue where Elentara would sometimes appear invisible during battles. Huh. I guess that would only be cool if the towers couldn't see her, but. Yeah, that, that would not be very cool because you don't know where the heck she's at. All right. Issue where messages may appear incorrectly in chat groups. Yes. Yes, dude. I got messages all over the place trying to figure this out. That chat is a mess. All right. All right. So they put some stuff in there. That's not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Last page here. As we add more features into the game, there is always the likelihood of more issues arising. So we really appreciate you taking the time to reach out and let us know when you encounter any problems. Please also rest assured that if you have reported any other issues that you are facing with the game, we are looking into it and we will have news for you as soon as we can. So that's nice. And it's true. I mean, there's no way around it, guys. As they add stuff in, there's going to be things that are, you know, you just don't know how it's going to react, especially once you've got all of us playing. We're going to figure out what's broken and what's not as we're going through it. So, I mean, it's got, you know, it's just the way it is. And I'm glad that at least they're open to our feedback, that they are listening. That's really good. 
Um, so, you know, just be obviously like whenever it comes to a big bug or you know, even a small bug, something that's annoying, you know, just be courteous, you know, reach out to support, leave something in the Discord channel or the Reddit channel or whatever, and, you know, be kind, be polite, and just give them the information they need to fix the game. Sitting there and berating them and, you know, cursing people out is not going to change anything. It might make you feel better for the short term or something like that, if that's your thing, but it's not going to fix anything. You know, so I mean, you know, hey, just be cool and be kind, and let's, let's, let's keep them aware of what's going on. Because I know if you're taking the time to give them feedback, it's probably because you actually do like the game and you want it to work. So you know, keep that in mind when you're doing it. All right, here we go. We would love to hear any feedback you have on these March and April changes and updates, or any thoughts that you have on the game generally. So please don't hesitate to, hesitate to let us know here or via any of our social media platforms, or. You can comment below on my channel right here, guys, and put it all out there because these guys will be watching. All right, they'll be looking at my stuff, so it helps. You know, put the comments down there. Trust me, the developers will look at them, and they, you know, it's another way of getting it out. All right, guys, so let's see here. Enjoy the new season and the festival of growth and all other events to come this month. Cheers, Kurt, game designer and resident beast master. Nice. Thanks, Kurt, for the letter. Hey, guys, this was cool. That's the end of the development notes. I mean, I really hope. You guys got some information out of this, and you're really liking the game. I'm having some fun. I'm really enjoying hanging out with my buddies online and stuff like that. It's really nice. Um, please, please comment below. Tell me your thoughts on these notes. Was there something in there that caught your attention? Was there something in there that surprised you? And even more so, was there something that wasn't in there? Was there an issue that you wanted taken care of that they didn't address yet? Comment below. Let us know and all that. Was there something you were looking, hoping they would say? Let me know. And once again, I'm going to ask that question to all my vets and any developers that might be listening. Will the season keys carry over? You said the tokens wouldn't, but you did not mention the keys specifically. So that would be great to know, guys. All right. That's it for this quick video. Not really that quick, I guess. And all that. I'm your boy, Darth Shigong. And as always, I hope to catch all of you gaming on the dark side.